Matthews uh, from Matthews Engineering here again. I've gotten a lot of good comments on uh, things that people would, would like me to test for the uh, particle filtration effect, efficacy at one micron. And I'm going to show the results for a lot of these materials. Um, I've got a couple other things to show. Um, in the meantime, I've also made this uh, UVC sterilization box. And um, uh, some of you might be aware that ultraviolet light, especially the very short wavelengths in the, in the 200 to 400 nanometer range, um, will kill uh, most microorganisms quickly. It also makes ozone, and uh, when you run this box, you can smell the ozone, um, and that's also uh, a good sterilization agent. Uh, of course, the bad part is uh, UVC is uh, dangerous. You don't want to look at it for any you know, period of time. It can also burn the top layer of the skin. And ozone, um, if you breathe a lot of it, uh, that can be bad too. But anyhow, so this is a box um, where you could, you could put masks or, some, or anything else in there. And, and I'm going to turn it on briefly there. You can see the UVC. You wouldn't want to leave that on for very long or stare at it. And that's, that's why this box can close. And you could, you could put stuff in there uh, to sterilize. Um, but going to experiment with that. The other reason I built this is I've got a new 3D printer that's a very large format printer. And I have a Formlabs uh, ultraviolet curing uh, system, but it's not very big. And this would be better for bigger prints. So I, I may be able to use this for that purpose as well. Um, the ultraviolet resins like to cure at about 405 nanometers, so this might be a little shorter, but I, I bet it will uh, I bet it'll be effective for curing uh, resins. Okay, let's look at some of the materials that, um, that people have asked that I test. And um, I'm not going to test all of these, but I'll, I'll show you the results and then we'll test a, a couple of them here. So um, one of the first things a lot of people suggested is a coffee filter. And this uh, Melita coffee filter, two layers, uh, tested about 64%, which is about the same as uh, cotton, uh, you know, good cotton fabric. Um, a big one is uh, shop towels. And uh, not all the shop towel brands are, are created equal. Um, this is Scott brand. They're quite good, 73% effective at two layers. Uh, one of the better brands is this Toolbox brand and it tests at 80% uh, effective for two layers. Uh, now these are sold out everywhere for that reason. I've also heard that uh, I think Kimberly Clark makes a brand of blue towel that's supposed to test well, but I have not tested that. Um, one of uh, my friends suggested I test this uh, parachute uh, nylon. It did not test well at all, but of course this is only one layer, which is a little unfair, but, but still not, not very good. Um, the other material, uh, people want uh, tampons tested. Of course, um, uh, a feminine pad is probably what they really mean. And this is a Walgreens overnight pad. Um, the problem with the pads is they have lots of, uh, you know, layers and adhesive and things that you can't breathe through. But if you disassemble it, there is a material inside um, that's tested 56% efficient, not as good as two layers of simple cotton. So I suspect there are some thick pads out there that are better, and thicker is usually better as long as you can breathe through it, uh, and there's a you know diminishing return if you can't breathe through things. Um, let's see, I think I already talked about the coffee filter. Um, and then the next one is a toilet paper. <laughs> Um, which I don't think is the best choice because it, you, know, you can't launder it and it won't last long, but if you're in an emergency and that's all you've got, that's pretty good. Um, I personally like Charmin Strong, so that's what I tested. This is probably substantially thicker than most uh, toilet paper, uh, but, um, but this test also shows how more layers of, of uh, material usually help. So a single layer of Charmin Strong at one micron was 29% effective, two layers 49% effective, three layers 63% effective. So three layers about as good as two layers of cotton mask. But again, that won't go through the laundry. It won't last, um, but, but in a pinch, that would, that would be a good idea. Um, the other thing that people mentioned is uh, Pellon. And Pellon um, 
is if you're a seamstress or you know into um, tailoring, you probably know what Pellon is. It's also sometimes called um, stitch witchery, um, and this is a fusible material. So if you put this in a hot iron, it will uh, it'll fuse uh, two layers of fabric together. Um, two layers of Pellon. Uh, now there's many kinds of Pellon, so I didn't test all of them, and some may be better than others. This one here is a, uh, uh, a single adhesive, side adhesive. It's for stiffening shirt collars and uh, you know sleeve arms on men's dress shirts, things like that. Uh, two layers of Pellon, uh, 52%. Um, but the other interesting thing about Pellon, even though it's not the best filter, at least this version isn't, um, I had some other versions of Pellon that's the double-sided adhesive, and this is sometimes called the stitch witchery. But uh, notice here's some blue paper towel with some of the uh, stitch witchery in there and an elastic, and, and look at how strong that is. So, so if you could come up with a design, a blue paper towel design, and the uh, uh, stitch witchery Pellon type material, you might be able to make a, a heat fused mask that doesn't require any sewing. So that's, this part of that was more interesting to me than the filtering effect of Pellon. Um, let's see, let's go on one more thing. Um, people recommended polypropylene convention bags and, um, and they were actually pretty good. Uh, I think this was a two layer test um, and this is the kind of bag that you get when you go to a, a convention. Um, and so that material is not bad either. Of course, all these materials could have, uh, uh, if they had, you know, chemicals or, or unwanted fibers, that would be a question. So don't use any material unless you're sure you know what it is and you're sure you know it's uh, safe. Um, here's another thing that I mentioned. Uh, the doctor I'm working with, um, I told her that I had you tried to use this machine to measure how well does a properly functioning sinus work. And um, because uh, nature, you know, is pretty good at designing a filter and a sinus um, would be, uh, uh, has turbinates, it swirls the air around and, and kind of like a cyclone vacuum cleaner, um, you know, flings the particles against the mucus and, and captures particles that way. I did try to use this machine with a hose uh, <laughs> in my mouth and, and open, you know, relax my throat and try to let the air loop through. But the water vapor uh, was too much for the machine and it, uh, it, the laser can't count through that. So, so if anybody knows the answer to this, I think this is an interesting question is how good is a properly functioning sinus at one micron? And it also brings up the point uh, that during the crisis, um, you want to maintain the health of your sinus, uh, the health of your, your throat and your ears. Um, anything, uh, you know, uh, neti pot, stuff like that, um, uh, keep your throat to gargle. Uh, these things uh, will make a good shot sinus, which is, is your best last defense. Um, okay, one more, uh, two more materials, and then we'll test this one. Uh, this one was brought to me by my, uh, my doctor friend. We'll test this Halliard 600. Um, but, uh, of course, I also have tested... Uh, furnace filters in previous videos. Uh, this is a MERV 13 furnace filter material and, um, and also vacuum cleaner bags. Uh, but those, uh, both of those materials rang alarms with people and there was even a doctor out of the UK that was frightened that these contained fiberglass. And I'm not saying that I know that these are safe for certain, but there's a very good test to tell if uh, fiberglass is present. Um, and, and I'll show you how that works. So I cut a little piece of this off of here. And uh, so the question is, is this fiberglass? And uh, we know that fiberglass is made from glass. And so uh, it has a melting point of 2,075 degrees Fahrenheit. And so uh, that's you know, what you need in a, in a kiln uh, to uh, temper metals and, and uh, fire clay, that type of thing. So that's very hot. And uh, we can tell that this is not fiberglass by putting it in a heat gun and you can see that it melts. So if that was fiberglass, that would not have, this would not have been anywhere near hot enough to melt it. So I'm not saying this proves that that's safe, but it does show that there's not fiberglass present, at least in that brand. Um, 
Okay, let's check. Uh, let's check one more now. Let's go and get a look in a little closer here. And um, I did test some other Halliard fabrics, and they didn't test well. But the one that people have asked about is this Halliard, Halliard 600. And um, this is a sterilization wrap, so I don't know if this is safe. Um, uh, you know, because it may contain. Uh, sterilization chemicals um, and I don't know what the material is either so I'm not saying that this material is safe but let's see what the filtering efficacy of that would be um, so to do the filtering efficacy let's take a baseline measurement to count the particles here in the shop I'm just doing a 10 second measurement and so we've got 100 new particles in 10 seconds Let's try the Halliard material. Let's try it blue side up. Uh, so that material does appear to be quite good, probably 99% effective or so at one micron. Uh, let's try it the other way around just to see if there's any difference. Like there usually isn't, but sometimes the materials are not uh, reciprocal. Looks like it's going to be about as good on the back side. So the Halliard 600 uh, appears to be quite good, uh, and that's from the medical community. I, if it's safe to breathe through, I'll, I'll look to the medical community to tell us that, but um, this could be a fabulous material if, if it's known to be safe. Um, Tom Matthews from uh, Matthews Engineering, thank you for watching. Thank you for all my new subscribers, and uh, uh, please stay tuned for more updates on uh, mask manufacturing.